you know, we, we've picked our tool, we get the tool online, we, um, Ken and Becca and I put everything up uh, almost the Friday before all the, actually it was the Friday of what was going to be the, the last day that we were supposedly allowed out. <laughs> um, so there was like the sense of urgency and weirdness as we were putting things together. Um, and we got the, the site up and running so that we could sell more tickets. And, you know, Mark, I want to bring you in at this point um, because originally you were, you were one of the skeptics. Um, and I'd love to hear from your standpoint, um, what made you change your mind as to why you thought that we could do this? Well, I mean, originally, you know, when we find out that we can't congregate in one place, something we look forward to, there's, you know, the stages of grief, you know, you feel angry, you're in denial, oh, surely we can do this. And then you realize, no, we do, we do have to cancel after all. Um, I think that we were way ahead of the game in terms of uh, moving the conference online. And I feel that uh, for me and for a lot of people, things look very different after like two weeks of being in the house yeah. than from like, oh, I think we should not like have a, a meeting. I have, just want to remind everybody we made this decision before, like weeks before the governor came on and said anything about, um, you know, that we have to stay at home or anything like that. So there's definitely a change in attitude from, you know, you're in your house to um, from before. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was, I was one of the naysayers for like 15 minutes, but we had a meeting and we decided that we're going to go forward. And between the choices of canceling and, uh, you know, having it online, we decided to have it online and I'm glad we did. Um, so Becca, uh, let's just talk about, uh, so there's the management. So we, we made the decision to go online. Um, we, you know, there were things that needed to get done. And at this point, we've got about three and a half weeks to get everything accomplished. So um, there's, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes um, that this team was responsible for. So uh, Beck and I started meeting, uh, we were doing daily standups Monday through Friday, uh, which was really the first time that I've done an actual standup uh, on a consistent basis. And man, that was, that was the best way for us to stay organized. They kept um, this thing on the rails. For kept, sure. it, it, it allowed us to understand what each of us was doing to do the reach out. Um, so that was one of the organization strategies that we used. Uh, the other thing that we started to talk about, and I think this is something that we can all sort of bring in. Um, once we knew that this was happening and yes, we wanted to sell tickets and you know, there's some marketing strategies, but we really wanted to think about the attendee experience, right? It was very important to us um, to try and figure out how to um, not just have, the, the, the live portion was very important to me. I felt that that was going to be better than taped. We did have that discussion and we decided to, go with live, which was definitely a, uh, you know, an extra piece that could go wrong. Um, but that was, we felt part of creating a good attendee experience. And um, Mark or Ken, if you want to join in just to say, you know, some of the things that you wanted to bring from the original um, sort of experience for the conference. Yeah, for me, it was always a concern. Like the, one of the biggest things for ATV is the hallway chatter, you know, the impromptu meetings that people have. And while we weren't able to directly replicate that, we, uh, from a suggestion, uh, decided to go with Slack, which was a, a great idea. It allowed people to form channels and chats and, you know, have those conversations and have direct messaging and maybe have conversations. We, we don't know <laughs> they're, they're talking to, them, to each other. But there were a number of speakers who, for example, um, when they finished talking, they would create a channel for further discussion of a subject if there was interest. And um, surprisingly, actually, Slack allowed us to answer to for the audience to present questions um, in a much, uh, uh, like a lot more questions than usually come at the end of the conference. I feel people were less inhibited to ask questions when they were just sitting at their keyboard and typing questions during a talk. So 
it was not unusual for a speaker to have like 10 to 15 questions at the end of the talk coming at them through the Slack channel. Um, but Martin Snyder uh, was part of the Northeast Scala conference a couple of weeks before we launched and they did an excellent review of what they learned that Mark and I and Becca and Tracy, we all like poured through that to, to glean tips um, and Slack definitely seemed to really be a big help for them. We use Slack all the time in a lot of our projects and we kind of light went off. We're like, yeah, Slack. I mean, why buy anything? Just use the community version of Slack and we'll have you know, Becca and I and, and Mark started brainstorming, we'll come up with rooms. You know, we'll just call them logical room A, B, and C since, and just mark all the, the talks since we have three hosts who are basically Zoom users that can run webinars, uh, Mark and um, the two other guys, Jack and Gary. And they, they just were able to have theirs assigned. Um, and naturally we had the rooms assigned to the moderators and then they would feed the questions. It worked great, I thought. Um, and you know, the other thing is I spun over and looked at Twitter. That was the other thing I was concerned about was what kind of spillover chatter will we have in social media? And I looked at it three or four days later, and I was really pleasantly surprised at all the positives and kudos, even on Twitter, which you would think wouldn't get much play when Slack was involved, but people were engaged there too, and on LinkedIn. So yeah. it's engagement. Of, that yeah, is the missing yeah. piece of all of this. Like it would be, it would have been so easy to tape the speakers and produce them and give them to an audience. But the fact that we a took it live, there's the engagement there. Let people have a place to ask questions of these speakers and also a place to mingle. Like especially now that we're all isolated, that was so necessary. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the best things about ETE is the fact that the audience has an opportunity to interact with the speakers. Anybody can watch a video online or a presentation or even an inspiring keynote, but to have the opportunity to have a conversation with that person in the hallway for, you know, an hour or two or even go to dinner or lunch with them, I mean, that's, that's what, like, makes ETE the best and we, we we did try a happy hour and there was an epic conversation between Rob <laughs> Napier and Richard Feldman that that lasted at least an hour and a half that's that's when I dropped off I don't know how much yeah. it went. that was epic I agree <laughs> but we can say that um, there are some things so again with audience engagement um, we'd actually picked up the the t-shirts uh, which we always give out uh, the week before we made the decision, we sort of knew that we were going down this path, but t-shirts were made. So, um, you know, how do you make lemonade out of, out of lemons? We actually, we mailed them out. Um, we mailed out over 200 t-shirts and we didn't, we don't have everyone's address, but um, I mean, it's pretty amazing that we were able to do that in that short period of time. Um, we, you know, we were trying to think of other ways. Um, trust me, if we had a little bit more time, I think we could have done some more fun things. Um, but that's definitely something that as people are looking to go online, um, really thinking about how you're engaging with that audience, um, what their experiences, I think, adds to it and, and thinking, you know, what you're trying to have them get out of it. The other um, thing I want to jump in there is yeah. with Slack, we were able to create like a charity channel. So people were pointing out the different charities they were supporting. And then we, instead of uh, gifts to the, the, the people who attended, because of the budget, we made a donation that Tracy had to fill it on it, right? Yeah, we usually do a speaker's yeah. gift. So instead of buying right. something, we made the donation, which I think was was another nice thing. Um, yeah. Shout out to Phil Abundance. Um, so I just... Um, we're definitely over that 15 minutes, but is there any, um, <laughs> I'm involved. It has to you be know, just in, in terms of uh, wrapping this up, um, is there anything else that for an audience, I mean, I would say that the other big thing was communication. So communication, um, over communicating to our audience, as well as over communicating behind the scenes to the speakers, um, allowing them to do a practice run if they, you know, so they felt a little bit more comfortable. Not everybody took us up on it, and that's fine, but having that option. Um, I would say documentation too, especially if we're introducing new tools for people, um, making sure that you're documenting it and giving them a place to go if they have questions and being and, openly and available. And, yeah, and multiple, yeah. multiple levels of communication of, of how to 
enjoy the conference with this with, with all the parts because you, you're gonna right. you're gonna be using various systems so you need to make sure that people can get on zoom and can get on Slack and whatever else you're using uh, beforehand and uh, try to provide that information through multiple channels. And making lots of mistakes early on. Like we ran through, the three of us, uh, Becca and Mark and I ran through many scenarios and Tracy too, where we pretended we were the speaker, pretended we were the, the, the person attending, pretend we were the host and did lots of screenshots. And then Becca did a wonderful job sewing that all together and putting a great email out there and I think the speakers and, and the attendees felt that we had their backs. Even if there were technical issues, no matter what, they knew they could come to us. They knew they could hit the Slack support channel or email us. And, you know, they were able to get answers right away. So if you're doing anything like this, if you're considering doing an online conference, you can't put it all together in a week. You can't do it a day of and hope that it all works. You've got to practice and thoroughly learn from what you're doing and document it. For sure, for the, it's, it's, it's especially important for moderators. If you have you know, good speakers yeah. who speak elsewhere, they probably by now are used to uh, working with Zoom or whatever else platform that you're using. If it's not Zoom, you probably have to train them a little bit. Also the audience, you have to remember that like the biggest hurdle is the beginning, the first couple of talks. After that, the audience kind of accepts what's happening and are tra quote unquote trained so they can, uh, you know, they, they know the drill. You don't have to, you know, tell them the instructions, you know, like go yeah. here, go do this. They, they kind of know the deal. So, you know, it gets easier as the conference progresses, although your fatigue <laughs> may increase, but it, it gets easier in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. You guys all did a great job. All three of you moderators were phenomenal. Yeah. Just wonderful. Yeah. And your committee this year, you know, from someone doing it for many years, I'm so thrilled to see how good the committee has gotten in this crop that you guys are working really hard at getting great speakers, so. Hats off to you guys. So I'm just going to wrap this up just to say, you know, we're going to continue to be there online. Um, we're going to push some boundaries because honestly, that's what's fun uh, about what we do in terms of how we're delivering content. Um, I think right now being bold and trying um, some new experiments with this medium uh, so that we can stay connected, I think is important. So um, I hope uh, if you are thinking about doing an event, you found this to be helpful and you can reach out to us uh, on LinkedIn if you have any other questions. Thanks guys, thanks for a great um, conference this year and um, it, was, it really was a special time.